Try this one on your own. We have the integral from 1 to 2 of the quantity 1 plus natural log x, all times x to the x dx. This is a non-trivial integral. Pause the video, try it out, and then we'll work through it together. So we're looking for a u here such that everything inside this integral is included inside the u, so some, some function of u, it might just be u itself, and then some u prime, right? So you want to find a u that between the u itself and its derivative, it includes all the x's here. So what if we let u be x to the x? Right? Sometimes you just have to try something and see what happens. What we're interested in here is if the derivative of this includes all this other stuff. Right? You want to make sure there's no weird x's left hanging around that aren't included in your u and the derivative of your u. So let's try it. What's the derivative of x to the x? And please don't say that it's x times x to the x minus 1. This is incorrect because that is the power rule which only works for expressions of the form x to the n, yes, x to the x, no. So instead we need logarithmic differentiation here. So let's let y be x to the x, and then we'll take the natural log of both sides here, and this is what you do every time you want to take the derivative with something with an x in the base and an x in the exponent. The natural log of both sides will bring that x down from the exponent. That's the cool thing about natural logs, one of the cool things. Um, so we now have natural log of y equals x natural log x. We can now take the derivative of both sides, d by dx of both sides, d dx. Okay, on the left, 1 over y, y prime, that y prime is the chain rule, of course. And then on the right, we have x natural log x, so this is the product rule, a prime b plus b prime a. There's our, our a and our b. So a prime b, a prime is 1. So I'll say 1 natural log x, a prime b plus b prime, 1 over x times a is x. So this right-hand side really simplifies to just natural log x plus 1. And then, of course, we have y prime. Now I'm going to bring up, this is 1 over y, y prime. I'm going to bring up this y in the denominator here up to the other side. That gives us y times all this, natural log x plus 1. But hey, what's y? Remember that y is actually x to the x. Here, before we put the natural logs in, we had y was x to the x. So let's just replace this down here with x to the x, and that will do it. There we go, x to the x. So... This is interesting here. So what we have is du dx is x to the x natural log x plus 1 times the quantity natural log x plus 1. Well, that's interesting. We could rewrite this expression as dx equals du over x to the x natural log x plus 1 and substitute this all in for dx. There's always a few ways to, to deal with the dx and the du part. Some people like to just substitute it straight in, saying like, oh, right here, I see that this dx is my du. Other people like to solve for dx and then, and then substitute that in just for dx and cancel everything out. One way or the other, once we do that, look what we get, just the integral of du. We have to change the endpoints, so let's do that before we lose track of the limits of integration there. Clear out a little bit of room here. Okay, so u of 1 is, well, u is here. u of 1 is 1 to the 1, which is 1. Similarly, u of 2 is 2 to the 2, which is 4. So we now have the integral from 1 to 4 of du. Look how much nicer that became. That's really incredible. This is an incredible integral. Well, the integral of du is simply u, and we evaluate that from 1 to 4. Well, that's 4 minus 1, which is 3. Which is kind of a surprising result. 
when I see something this complicated and involved, we're saying that the area under that crazy curve between one and two, whatever this curve comes out to, that area happens to be a whole number, a very simple whole number of three. I just find that surprising, but hey, it is what it is. So there we have it, a pretty complicated integral, but a pretty impressive final result.